Hi, English 1022 students. I am so glad to talk with you today. I didn't make a video um, at the end of last week before the long weekend. And quite frankly, I'm a human being who is not shocked or surprised, but still kind of mourning a lot of um, the Supreme Court uh, decisions that have happened uh, near the end of June and kind of figuring out what all that means for me and my family and figuring out what it means to be a citizen of this country and definitely acknowledging that as a white woman I have privilege and might seem to some other people who I admire and honor very much um, who have struggled with the loss of rights in a way that I've never experienced as a, a white woman, um, that maybe I don't have the right to feel this way, you know, but gosh, it just feels strange and different and confusing and scary. And yeah, human beings have to process, right? You know, process that information. So I don't know about you, but it's just been a lot and um, my hands are better. Yay, my rash is better. Um, and, and then one other quick, uh, announcement here before I get into the topic of this video that I, I am having a medical procedure um, done on Thursday, July 14th. So I will be offline all day and I'll probably be offline most of the day on July 15th. I might uh, just take the morning off um, to recover and then try to log in in the afternoon to do some great updates or, you know, whatever I need to do. Another one of these videos maybe, but I wanted to let you know that next Thursday, the 14th and 15th, I won't be online answering email or anything like that um, so I can recover from my procedure. Um, but it's an outpatient thing, so, you know, just taking some time to rest and, and get my recovery um, a good jump start. And so I wanted to let you know about that. But why I am here before the weekend, and thank you for letting me kind of vent, you know, about being in this country and stuff that's happening and all the scary shooting stuff and, I mean, just everything. So anyhow... Um, I'm here to talk to you about what Medium is, and um, what I've done is I went in and looked at your Module 3 discussion board post when you were trying to understand how genres work within essay writing. Um, I, I took, you see I have created this long handout, which I'll post with this video, and what I've done is I've categorized or classified types of mediums that match up with genre writing. So, you know, for Module 4, six, which we are in, you are looking at um, topics that you want to write about for essay three, and quite frankly, looking at topics that you might choose for essay four as well. But you're definitely picking a topic, free choice, any topic you want. I hope it's something you care about, connect to, matters in your life in some way. And so then you are the writer in the rhetorical situation, figuring out your purpose, figuring out your audience, figuring out your context, figuring out your exigence, figuring out your genres, how do you want to write about this, you have a proposal discussion board due by the end of the week, um, due on June 10th, and then you're also thinking about the visual nature of your writing this time. So, first thing I want to say, as I said in the introduction video to module six, you can write an academic essay, thumbs up, go for it. But if you want to try to challenge your writing, challenge yourself to write something different than academic writing, you can. You can write something that's more personal, more informal. You can write something that's more professional, which for me has a similar tone and style to academic writing, but just doesn't have that academic jargon, the academic language and weird sentence structures and things like that. So you get to pick the medium in which your topic and the whole rhetorical situation that is it exists for your topic into a medium, which means you're thinking about the way your essay looks. So now it might not even be an essay, right? It might be a letter or it might be an article, a blog article or a newspaper article or something else. So I hope you take this opportunity to challenge yourself in a way that you think will help you after the class. Think about your reason for taking this class. The, the state of Colorado, all universities, all community colleges say you must take a college composition class so that when you write academic essays in future semesters for other courses that you know how to do that. So if you need more practice with academic essay, that's the medium you should pick. Academic essay. You know what it looks like. If you choose an academic essay, you all, you must use images. I want you to be able to write your essay, research your sources, but then also in addition to the two sources you're using to 
help you to find information about your topic. You will also research images, and not just images to make the document look pretty, images that add content, that add um, some critical thinking uh, opportunities to your reader. So academic essays require images. I would say at least two. And then next week during module seven, I'll have you um, looking at the requirements for using images in academic essays with captions and how do you preface them before they show up in the essay and all the MLA stuff that um, is involved because you're using images. But if you want to try a different kind of writing and you think your topic would fit well with a different medium, then you choose that. So what did I do in this handout? I'm going to post it, as I said, after this video is posted as well. I've categorized or classified different mediums that fit within specific genre writing. So if you feel like your writing will mostly be descriptive and narr narrative, you might do a brochure or a creative nonfiction or a blog article or something like that because those kinds of writing are less academic, more informal, more personal. Um, this list for if you want to stick with academic essay and, and, and also want to do argument or persuasion, um, you might do a letter. Uh, I introduced open letters to you earlier in the week. You might even write a letter as if you are um, writing to a legislature or um, a senator, um, a representative. You might write a letter to a business if you have somehow been wronged by them or something unfair has happened to you and you want to communicate that. Um, so you could do a letter. So you all are picking, and I'm not going to go through all of this handout because I'll let you look through it. But you all are picking um, the medium that you think fits best with your topic and your rhetorical situation. Um, I do want to highlight that the there are similar medium, or I should say media, but there are similar mediums. I'll go ahead and use the improper uh, plural there under um, argument and persuasion and expository. I've also defined what the genres or the, the, the category type means. Um, no one in class will be doing a summary or an abstract. That's a specific kind of academic assignment you may have experienced in English 121 or English 1021 as the new name is, the new uh, course number. Um, but you'll notice there are some similar ones under um, expository here. I think this is the fullest list of medium types that you might want to look at. Um, Microsoft Word has a lot of templates, so if you have Microsoft 365, you should have some access to some templates for a pamphlet or a newsletter or something like that. Google Docs probably has some templates, but maybe not as many. Um, I wanted to scroll down to reflection to help you see that your topic might require some reflection. What does reflection mean? It can mean so many things. Um, if you decide that you want your essay through to have some reflection in it, um, it might be because you're wandering through your mind about a topic, trying to figure out what it means to you, right? Um, I think philosophical writing does this to a certain extent. Um, it might be asking questions, not necessarily answering questions. Reflection doesn't really require answers. It's just coming up with the possibilities or the, um, the possible ways you could go with something related to your topic. Uh, it could be pro proposing a solution um, that might not have a true solution. You know, there might be options or a combination of options that you would have to come up with to get close to a solution. Maybe there is no true solution to lots of things that we write and think about. Um, it can also be thinking about the process of change or improvement. So we use that part of reflection in this class, right? You're writing in a reflective way. Every time I say to you, like I did for module, five when I was asking you to think about what you would revise in essay one and if you weren't using essay one you still had to answer the question about essay two like how would you revise these things um, so thinking about change or improvement so that can be in your personal life or that can be um, improving in your job skills or your learning skills all kinds of things annotated bi bibliography is also something none of you will probably do unless you have a really creative idea to work with this but this is both basically writing a works cited page that kind of explains sources that you've researched for a large research topic. So I was really happy to see that many of you listed um, abstract or summary and annotated bibliography when we were listing genres. So that was awesome. And the other thing I wanted to touch on very quickly are these essay types. You might be thinking if you want to stick with an academic essay you own, you don't want to deal with a pamphlet 
uh, I do want to scroll back up to say I have accepted in the past um, students want to write a podcast so they write out the script for their podcast I have accepted um, slideshow um, or PowerPoint slides um, and it's accompanied by the, the talking points you would include in your slideshow so you're writing the four pages I think that's a requirement for SA3 so there's all kinds of possibility here you can create your own website um, I'll post in the module 7 um, weekly schedule some website links to free website um, and or blog creators um, so that you can do that pretty easily by using a template to fill stuff in okay so if you want to do something like that I've had students I'm gonna scroll up I think a little bit to do a diary or journal entry so which has a visual look to it right you could put images you could make the font look different um, so there's so much possibility here and I'm so excited to see what you'll do with your writing and the visual nature of your writing um, depending on what you pick so I'm looking forward to your proposals I see that no one has done that yet because they're maybe saving it for over the weekend work um, so last thing as I was trying to share with you that if you want to stick with academic essays you might consider not this first one uh, creative nonfiction I'm teaching a um, creative writing class right now and so creative nonfiction is uh, definitely not academic writing it's uh, some kind of weird mix between journalism and narration and reflection and expository writing depending on the topic and depending on the writer um, but it definitely doesn't fit into an academic context um, but you might think about any of these essay types uh, certainly you can write an argument that's not listed here I'll go ahead and add it but you could do an ethnography which is the writer putting themselves within a culture that they are not a part of that they are not expert in and learning about that culture and writing about that culture uh, that Clint Smith essay that we read for the rhetorical analysis on the Confederate lies that's an ethnography so you could go back and look at that one um, a literature review um, you could read some literature you could do some music uh, music isn't literature necessarily but what I'm saying is a movie um, movie television show uh, music um, literature you know you could do a review so many reviews are online so many people work in that context where they're reviewing stuff you could do another analysis it doesn't have to be a rhetorical analysis it could be a literary analysis it could be an analysis of a philosophical text where you're trying to break that apart um, a response or a reaction essay is very similar to an analysis essay it's just a little bit more informal and then you could write an argument essay you could write a persuasive essay all right I think I hope I've helped you to understand what the difference is between genre and medium genre is a type of writing right I could write a reflection essay and I'm writing within a certain genre and my reflection essay might even have some narration in it might even have some argument in it depending on how that comes out but it might be primarily reflective but reflections can also be used within a medium and mediums and genres can be the same right a description essay um, can look like an essay it can look like a blog but now when I say essay or blog now I'm thinking about mediums right because now I'm thinking about what does that writing look like from a visual standpoint so this essay 3 requires you to add that visual nature to your rhetorical situation and again super excited to see how these things turn out um, think about uh, a check-in meeting for essay 3 if you want to talk through it after you submit your your quasi proposal discussion board um, as always I'll give you a link um, to the check-in meeting um, sign-in sheet and I look forward to working with you on your essay threes. Take care, have a nice weekend you all, and um, I will see you next week at the beginning of module seven. Can you believe it? Yes, we're moving into module seven starting on July 11th. Take care.